Hey everybody, this is Mike, and uh, today's, I think, May 30th, maybe? It's Friday. Um, and we're, uh, we're going to do a little field trip here. Um, let's see if you can see behind me. That's the, uh, that's the Conestoga River. And it's a, it's a significant river, particularly as it relates to the Susquehanna, because it's a, it's a tributary to the Susquehanna. If you follow downstream from where I am right now in like, I don't know, like five, ten miles, where it, it empties into the river is where you find big Indian and little Indian rock, which is the highest concentration of petroglyphs found um, east of the Mississippi. And it's been virtually ignored by uh, the archaeological community, which, you know, to me is a pretty big indication of, <laughs> of like, you know, why we should pay attention to it. But it was a significant spot. It was uh, very significant to, to Lachiel, who was a, um, a Toltec elder who died a couple years ago. Um, but he recognized this location um, and its significance to um, the Toltec history. And, um, you know, if you've seen any of the, the, the Secret in the Susquehanna videos, um, the, the sweet spot being the 40th parallel in the Susquehanna River, um, that's where this is as well. So this is really, really significant. And the name itself, like the Conestoga, um, Conestoga, I think it began as a town, but that's also another name which is commonly um, attributed to the Susquehannock people. But um, as we know, that's not a real name anyway. Um, we don't know what they called themselves, but we definitely recognize that they were a very, very unique people, and this is where they lived. And so um, after uh, their obliteration, um, who was left of those people and, and, and other peoples, they, they still lived in this area in Lancaster County, and they were known as the Conestoga. It was kind of like a general term. And Conestoga, you know, the name also has a, 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 a connotation to um, like more mainstream history. If you're familiar with uh, like the idea of, of the settlers of uh, who went west and, and settled the you know settled the west, um, they went on Conestoga wagons, and a Conestoga wagon was made here. And it was uh, what made them so special was their durability, and particularly their hemp. Um, coverings and all of that was made right here in in, um, in Conestoga in Lancaster County. Uh, this is back like in the 1700s, maybe 1800s. I don't know. Uh, and then also, what's interesting is this is this was once a really big tobacco growing area. And so, if you're familiar with the the term stogie, referring to a, um, a cigar, well, that's comes from Conestoga and, and a brand of, of cigars. So, you know, this is where, where we are right now, but that's not, that's not what we're, uh, we're here for. We're here for today. <laughs> uh, we're here for today to take a look at this right here, which is my friend Ben's, one of his operations. It's called Urban Edge Farm. And so, Ben is, uh, I've known Ben for, I don't know, like 10 years or so. I met him um, in an Aikido class years ago. And he's, uh, he's an entrepreneur, he's a uh, herbalist, he's a uh, nationally recognized um, uh, expert in, in, in permaculture. And so this is one of his, this is one of his operations and it's, it's freaking fantastic. And so I wanna share this with you. So it's called, what do we got here? It's. Uh, urban edge farm and the idea behind it it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant idea um, he uh, acquires for um, you know for no money or very little money property um, which has um, no economic value and so this is uh, land which is within the floodplain and you can't build on it. And so a lot of these, uh, the, this land which, which sits along the flood, the flood plain, it, um, you can't build on it, it's got no value, it, it, it has no tax revenue, it still needs to be maintained. And so, you know, the people who own it, typically, you know, it's more of a hassle than anything else. And um, from, a, from a, um, an ecological perspective, this area is incredibly valuable. It's known as a riparian buffer, and it's where where the landscape meets the water, and it's very, very significant in terms of healthy landscapes, healthy water, all that sort of stuff. 
So my friend Ben, what he did was he was able to acquire these properties and then utilizing his knowledge of permaculture um, and herbalism, he's turned it into these urban edge farms, these a micro, a micro farm, if you will. And it is used to, um, so a couple things happen. It, uh, you know, he grows food and not just him, like, you know, there's a whole team. Uh, they grow food and they sell food. So it brings in income that way. It provides jobs. Uh, but then also it is a location for teaching as well. So um, people can come and, and practice uh, uh, permaculture farming techniques in environments like this and learning how it can be done so it can be replicated um, elsewhere. So in like the most literal sense, he's taking this thing which has no value, you know, according to our um, to culture right now, and, and turning it into something of great value. So I think this is, this is their uh, third season, maybe second season, uh, uh, spring here. So I just want to walk through it. I'm not really, I don't really know that much about growing nothing. So I'm not going to be able to explain <laughs> what's going on, but I want to show everyone what we got here. So walk in right here. Harvesting microgreens right here. Where the compost is being made. Mushrooms are being grown here and harvested. This here, these are all, you can look closely. I think this is for mushrooms right here as well. You can see some growing right down there. And so two years ago, three years ago, all of this was just ab in absolute, um, you know, it just looked all trashy. There was trash everywhere and debris everywhere. And it was just, you know, what a completely neglected um, and, and uh, ignored parcel of land would look like. And now, as you can see, you know, this is turning into something of, uh, of, of, um, you know, real significance. Let's go over here. This is where the bees are kept. These are the bees. They were swarming out here, um, looking for a new hive, and that was kind of cool to walk through all of that. And this house here, and it, it looks like it's, um, you know, probably built in the 40s or 50s, but actually it's much older than that. This is one of uh, probably a couple hundred years old, and this is being renovated, and it's going to become a, uh, a place where, where people can stay. Let's see what's going on right here. And 
And so I guess that's the uh, that's the tour. Um, if you're interested to find out more, I definitely recommend it. Uh, Susquehanna Apothecary is his herbal herbalism business, I guess, and, and they've got a pretty big presence on Etsy, but you can go and see their website as well. Uh, a lot of whatever products could can be grown here. Um, this is where the uh, you know the source material comes from, and so uh, there's a lot of good stuff there. And if you want to learn more, you could also go to uh, I guess what is it? What do we have here? Susquehanna Sustainable Enterprises. There's the website, and um, oh, and one last thing. There's also a there's also a line of um, really high quality. Um, lifetime uh, permaculture tools which um, they sell that underneath the uh, the name rebel garden tools so if you know this is your sort of thing I would definitely recommend checking that out you know whenever we can support each other you know we do so so anyway I hope you found this interesting enjoyable I did have a good day